Hey guys, and welcome back to day number four of the art tutorial seven day, what's it called? Seven day art tutorial challenge. Whew, there it is. So, so far in the challenge, we have drawn water ripples, a magnolia tree, and a parakeet. So if you've missed those videos, I'm putting all the videos in a playlist and I'll have the link to that in the description box below so that just in case you miss one that you can go back and watch it. So today's challenge, I don't even know who to credit with this with because it was so many people asking for this everywhere and yeah so it goes out to all of you guys who asked how to draw fire and again like with the water tutorial there's a lot of different ways to draw fire i decided to try to tackle candlelight hmm. so let's get started so here you can see i've got this candle kind of sketched out here and then just the outline of this flame one thing you want to remember when drawing out the flame is that that's going to be a little bit thicker at the base and as the flame heads up it's going to get thinner and thinner and thinner it may be straight up or depending on if there is a little bit of breeze you might put a little bit of a flicker to it depending on, on the mood of your of your fire i'm going to use a wide variety of colors not just yellow but i do have a nice yellow here i have a white i have a salmon pink which is kind of like a light pastel orange I have a regular orange, a crimson red, which is kind of a dark red. I have a Tuscan red, which is a browner red. I have a poppy red, which is going to be a really orangey red. And then I have another red, which I don't know what color it is because it broke off. Before I jump into this, if you don't have all these colors, it's okay. Just use what you have. For many years in my artist journey, I survived with a 24 pack of Crayola color pencils. And you just do with what you got. You just do the best you have and then when you begin to upgrade your tools and supplies the world just opens up for you so don't be discouraged if you don't have all of these colors just pick out the ones that you do and follow along another tip with using color pencils is you're going to want to keep them really sharp so the difference between these two pencils here this one has a really nice point to it but this one's pretty dull this is not going to give me a really crisp and precise line so I always have a little pencil sharpener at hand to sharpen up my pencils. And I also get a lot of questions from you guys asking what kind of pencil sharpener do I use? I have a electric pencil sharpener. I find that works best with color pencils, especially if you're having problems with your pencils breaking. I would really recommend getting an electric pencil sharpener. I don't know if they make this exact model anymore, but I will put the, a link to the brand um, where you can get one online in the description box below. So what I'm going to start with first is I'm going to start with my yellow and I'm just going to begin to very lightly bring in some of this color. I'm also going to put the photo that I use as a reference right over here so you guys can kind of follow along with that. But you'll see I'm just kind of flicking this light down and I'm going to go down here a little bit and just very lightly flick this light up. I'm not adding a lot of pressure to this I don't want to burnish this because I want to be able to layer a lot of color in here. As it gets towards this middle part, as you see in the reference, that's the brightest part of the candle. It's almost, it's pretty much white right there. So I don't want to put too much yellow in there. And I can go back in with my white and really begin to apply some of that white in there. The trick with drawing fire or any kind of flame is to not just assume fire is yellow or red or just orange, it's just one color. It's not. It's a wide variety of a lot of different colors. I'm going to go back in with my, with my orange and start flicking that color up there. And then right up here at the top, I'm going to flick that down into the yellow. I'm going to go back in with my yellow now. And now I can start adding a little bit heavier hand. So I kind of burnish those two colors and blend them together from that dark orange into that white. I'm going to take a little bit of this red and lay it right down on top there just a little bit and just a little bit at the top here. I'm 
Then I'm going to grab this wick here. Pull that up, then I'm going to grab my orange and just put a little bit of a dabble at the top of the wick where it's caught on fire there. And just building up that color. I think it's the trick with drawing anything is sometimes if we if it's a commonplace element or item or something that we see our brain just automatically assumes we know what we're drawing but when you really investigate what you're drawing and you really study it and go what are those colors that make that happen that is when you really begin to learn Oh, I see a little bit of that orange, and that's causing that glow to happen. It's all about studying and being patient. And being okay with failing and trying again when you do. Like here, I think I have the flame too close to the wick. So instead of just scrapping the piece, I'm going to go back in with a darker color. Here I've got a little bit of a dark purple in there. I'm just going to flick that into there and that's going to shade that down a little bit. Finding out what your tools do, what your paper does. If you're wanting to blend things out, but you don't want to add color, you can use a colorless blending tool, which is just pure kind of wax. Kind of blend that out just a little bit. So you'll see this colorless blender, even though it's colorless, adds a little bit of a film to it. So you can see that fogginess. So I can use that if I want to create a little bit of a glow, or I couldn't do that so much if I had like a white or something like that, it'd be just way too bright. And I don't have a super duper dark gray to be able to do this. So I'm just gonna use this colorless blender. And then I'm gonna do these little circle motions here and just blend this out. And there we go, we have a little candle flame. So again, the top things on drawing fire is to practice it obviously is to unpractice it. And when you practice it, don't just practice it out of your mind. Look at photos, look at how the colors in the flame are blending together. So the same steps I would take in drawing this are the same steps I would take on drawing like a campfire or, or a fireplace or even a forest fire. I would take it first and look at some reference photos, get the ideas, study from life, and then I can begin to take what I learned from life and then create things from my own mind. But it's gonna give me a more accurate looking piece. Thank you guys for all of your great requests the last couple of days, but we still have a few more days left of the seven day challenge. So in the comment section below, write what you would like to see in Saturday's tutorial video. And if you're brand new, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, and until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye! Pencil and some paper, and the best part 